Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host, Morgan, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Miss Sarah Shower. Hi guys. Sarah has an amazing YouTube channel, and I've been creeping on her for quite some time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fan, fangirling over here. Um, so we're coming at you today with, I don't even know what theme I was going for. Kind of like when I read these stories, I was at a loss for words. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like no words slash certified asshole. Okay, so all of the people, all of the stories that you're about to read, I'm about to be like super offended. Not offended, but just kind of like, what? Yeah, how is this possible? How is this possible? Why are you still here? How are these people dealing with this? Okay, I want to hear these. I'm so excited. (laughs) Okay, well, we're starting it off with a good one. So you ready? Yes. Okay, let's do it. So up first, am I the asshole for not wanting my fiance's grandmother... 98 female at our wedding. (laughs) My fiance, 30 male, and I, 28 female, are getting married next month. Everything is going great, but we've been having a serious argument about having his grandmother at our wedding. We've agreed not to have kids at our wedding, and we want the reception to be a huge party for our adult friends and family with dancing, loud music, and an open bar. However, for precisely the same reasons that we don't want kids there, I don't want his elderly grandmother at our wedding either. I said she can come to the ceremony, but not the reception. It will be extremely loud, and I want it to be a party atmosphere, and she will be extremely out of place. For context, none of my grandparents are still alive, and he still has his last living grandmother. This has caused a huge fight, since she said she has always dreamed about being at her grandson's wedding. He is her oldest grandchild, and she probably won't make it to the next family wedding. (laughs) Fuck! This person's cutthroat. Which is why I said that she's more than welcome at the ceremony, but she will just be too out of place at the reception. She and he both insist that she will be fine and wants to go to the party. But I just know it will inevitably lead to us dealing with her and taking care of her, and I just want to get drunk and let loose with my friends. She's now really upset and won't talk to me, and my fiancé is also angry. I think I am within my right to make this request. I am the bride, after all. Am I the asshole? I don't don't even understand this. Grandparents are not like children. What, are you scared that your grandma's going to shit herself and you have to change her in the (laughs) middle of the dance floor? Like, she's, if, okay, like, I understand, like, wanting to be a good host, but if someone just wants to, like, relax for a bit while everyone's dancing and drinking, they would just simply sit back. Like, not everyone is going to be at the dance floor at all times, so she would just, like, be with the other people just sitting there. She would just chill. Yeah, and also, she could get drunk. Like, that's not an equivalent to children. I don't understand. No, like, my grandma got smashed at my brother's wedding and, like, literally stole a microphone, gave a speech. Like, my grandma probably partied harder than all of us there. Yeah. Like, this is, like, 98? Let her have her last fun fucking wedding. No, yeah, she's almost almost 100, so she should be, like, the guest of honor. I don't understand this. A total, like, asshole for not wanting her there. Yeah, you are the asshole for not wanting your grandma there. If she gets drunk, the worst comes to worst, she falls asleep at a table. <laughs> and you have to, like, hey, guys, can you help lift my grandma after the party? <laughs> like, just she's not going to, like, stop the dances and be like, guys... I have to go home. No, just let her have a nice nap. Just let her nap. Let her have a fucking nap. She's earned it at 98. <laughs> you are the asshole because she could just sleep. I know. Also, like, as this dude then, because it's the bride that's asking. Yeah. I would take this as such a red flag. Yeah. Which, if you um, if you have any red flags that you hear throughout the stories, I printed you a little a little flag. This is a red flag because here's the thing. Grandparents don't instill the same fear as children. When I walk onto an airplane and I see someone with children, I'm like, all right, this is going to be hit or miss. I if shit I, my pants every yeah, time. If I, if I see old people board a plane, I'm not like, oh, God, someone's going to be crying the entire time. Like, that's the same <laughs> thing for uh, a wedding. Like, this is – you probably only get married once. Probably this girl's going to get married twice because he's an asshole. But, like, <laughs> just have your grandma there and then, like, your next – here. Your next wedding, just don't invite your grandma. Like they cruelly said in the comments, like, what was that fucking quote? He is her oldest grandchild, and she probably won't make it to the next family wedding. Let the bitch have her day then. Exactly. This is her time to shine. Let her fucking live. She's on the way out. I'm sorry. 98, I mean, 98's really, 
That's pretty old. Yeah. That's that's not just old. That's like super old. So she just, if anything, she has one shot at heel and she's down and out. And then everyone can dance around her. I doubt, like, I doubt you can, she can even hear you at this point. So like. Just let her have her fun. I, this bridezilla needs to get her ass kicked. She does. So top comment on this one. You're the asshole. Not sure how you could be more the asshole, to be honest. You're hearing the love of your life say this is important. You're hearing someone really important to your partner say this is important. And you're putting getting drunk ahead of that? FFS. No idea what that stands for. For fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. 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 Good save. She's been a grown adult longer than you've been alive. I'm pretty sure she can handle any tiredness and noise as she wishes. If I was your partner, I'd be noticing the red flags. Exactly. That's she's lived through like a war world war. She's lived through the Vietnam War. She can she's totally fine at your wedding. There's nothing that she hasn't seen that's going to happen unless someone gets shot at your wedding. She's probably fine. Yeah. She might have even seen that too. Exactly. Granny might have some miles under her belt. Up next, am I the asshole for asking my wife to wear adult diapers? I'll try to keep this short and sweet. Wife is around 16 weeks pregnant, and for the past few weeks, she has been getting up in the middle of the night to pee a lot, which wakes me up since I am a light sleeper. I have to wake up early in the mornings, and I find it hard to get back to sleep once she has woken me up. And there is literally nowhere else for me to sleep since I don't want to be on the couch for many months. I recommended she use adult diapers so that she wouldn't have to get up as much, but she seems to think that I'm the asshole for this and has argued about it. Her argument is that adult diapers are for disabled people and people who are older. I say they are for anyone who needs them, such as her. Am I the asshole? Should I spend the rest of her pregnancy on the couch? What are your initial thoughts? Fuck this dude. Okay. What? Wait, she's how many months pregnant? She's 16 weeks, which is like still first trimester-y. She's early on. I don't like that he's like, he doesn't want to spend time on the, here, you don't have to spend the entire night on the couch, just alternate, you know, if it's that much of an inconvenience. You're asking your wife to pee herself in your bed, you know? I can't even imagine, like, dating someone and be like, hey, it just to make it easier, can you just piss yourself? Like, that's uncomfortable. That's the most uncomfortable thing. And then, like, sitting in your wet, soggy diaper the whole night. Exactly. Like, she's an adult. She's not a baby. Yeah. She's going to wake up. I have to pee. I have the urge to pee. So she just wakes up, pees herself, and then consciously sits there like, oh, here's another four hours in a soggy, wet mess. Yeah. If you're a light sleeper, imagine how it must feel sleeping in piss. Like, imagine how much of a light sleeper you're sleeper you're going to become for months of sleeping in pee. Oh my God, dude, just sleep on the couch or get some earplugs. Get some, uh, get an eye mask. Get a fucking blow up mattress for the living room or something or a cot, like trundle bed. No, seriously. Sleep like, away couch. Get a like pull out like a uh, cot or something yeah. and just sleep on that. You're the one with the, she has something that she cannot fix temporarily. You have something permanently that you cannot fix. So you are the person who takes less priority. Get a cot. Sleep on the couch, alternate oh, yeah. on the couch. I mean, her bladder might not be the same after the baby. She could just be a frequent peer going forward. Exactly. Also, if you, if say she does, like put on some uh, diaper or whatever, now she can request you put on whatever she suggests. Mm-hmm. So she can be like, put on some, put on an eye mask. Make it fair. Exactly. Put in some earplugs. Um, and you know, like let's equal each other out and see how you feel after like a week. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if separate beds in the same room would be like good too. Like Yeah. Like uh Europe style, like when I was in Czech Republic somewhere over there. The beds there, like you would ask for a queen bed, uh-huh. but they give you two twins pushed together. That's okay. their like way they do it. And I'm like, I wonder if he had like his own little like separate thing that didn't rock and shake him if he'd yeah. be okay. Well, I wonder if like is it the light turning on? Is it the sound of the toilet or mm-hmm. is it the bed? Cuz if it's the bed, get like a um you know that, like, infomercial from, like, early 2000s where they jumped on the bed and there was, like, a glass of wine? Oh, my God. Th- th- I think that was for, like, early tempur Yeah, get a tempur dude. <laughs> if it's a light disruption, get an eye mask. If it's a sound, get some earplugs. You could easily adjust and you're like, my wife that I impregnated is inconveniencing me. I was literally going to say, this is your fucking fault. This is your fault. You did you this, did dude. You did this. You just you did this. Sleep in another room. 
I just, as the wife, I would literally be so appalled that like my partner was asking me to fucking wear a diaper. I, I'd be like, you know what? No, you can have the couch for the rest of the, all these fucking trimesters. I'd appease them. I'd wear the diaper, but then you also get to recommend what they get to wear. And so that's where I would be like, wrap your face up, wear a helmet. <laughs> I used to wear a ski mask to sleep because what? I didn't have good enough blinds. Oh my gosh. So I would flip the ski mask around because like I couldn't block out the light. And you know what? I made do. How did you suffocate? Oh, I cut a hole in the mouth. Oh, okay, good. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weirdo. I'm weird. But like I must sleep, like slip off in the night. So yeah. Oh, true. I, I would just wear the diaper and be like, wear it. Like wear an eye mask, you asshole. What a, yeah. Oh, what a bitch. Top comment. You're the asshole for expecting your wife to piss herself for your comfort. Get a grip. Good God, girl. Get a grip. What the fuck, man? You're the asshole and get used to not sleeping. You're going to have a baby and you'll have to wake up at night. Exactly. You're going to have a baby crying in the night. Like, what are you going to be like, baby, can you wear a diaper over your head? Because it's like really hard for me to sleep at night. Well, I think he probably expects his wife to be the main caregiver. I can't. I can't even entertain that thought because I will get violent. Like, <laughs> I hate when men are just like, oh, no, my wife has to like, I, I can't. Even She's be- a stay at home mom. That's her job. Yeah. You know, like fifty fifty. Have you seen that breakdown of like um, stay at home moms, like what they should be paid, like they're like I, a maid? I literally just brought this up recently on the on this podcast. Yeah, like, it's insane. It's like one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's six digits for sure. Exactly. Oof! If I was your wife, you would have earned your spot in the shed. Mm-hmm. Shaking my head. You want her to be in humidity, risk infections, and lose her self respect while laying in soiled diapers for your comfort. She needs to get up and move around. So she doesn't get blood clots and being pregnant hurts. So you're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. You are the asshole. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, okay. So if this man just ba- like had the basic respect for his wife, if you're constantly laying in pee every single night, I can only imagine that may lead to an infection or UTI, like- UTI, yeah. Yeah, something that could affect the baby. So you can't even like- you can't even remove yourself for a, like a moment to be like, this could affect my wife and the baby that you made. You're a all-consumed asshole. Yeah, he's a little self-centered. A little. A little. On to the next one. Mixing it up with, I think this one's going to be a little bit more lighthearted. Okay. So this one is from like a subreddit called Today I Fucked Up. Typically like self-humiliation stories. Mm-hmm. So... Today I fucked up by drugging the bartender and ruining a wedding. I I need to hear them out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so this fuck up happened the summer before COVID, but I think the statute of limitations are up so I can tell this story. My wife and I went to her colleague's wedding. I'm not a huge drinker and I didn't really know anyone, so my plan was to grab some sort of cold refreshing beverage, find somewhere to post up, and nurse it while I got really stoned and did some people watching. Which leads me to my drugs. On the way to the wedding, I stopped at a dispensary and picked up a reusable vape pen thing. I'm a pretty traditional smoker. I go to the place and buy an eighth and smoke it in my ancient bowl over the course of the next month or two. I'd never had a pen before. I was just like, I'm going to a wedding and I want something that won't make me sleepy or mentally handicapped. And the young woman at the counter handed me this thing. As my wife was driving us over, I tried it out. I also don't smoke very much at one time and have a hard time with anything like joints or bongs, etc. When I do smoke these things, they hit way too hard and I cough like crazy and hate myself. So I took a very small hit, noticed it hit really hard and thought, quote, well, that's because you think everything hits too hard. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm at the reception, standing in line to grab some drinks from the bartender and notice the tip jar. Realizing I don't have any cash, I'm like, quote, dude, do you have Venmo or something? I know, lol. And he's like, ah, don't even worry about it, man. It's no big deal. But I'm a service industry vet, so I wanted to find a way to tip him because I know it's going to be a long night and a lot of people won't tip. So I'm like, all right, man, if my wife has some cash, I'll double back over. But uh, in the meantime, if you party and I show him the pen... He's like, oh, for real? Hell yeah, dude. And proceeds to take an enormous puff on this thing. Within seconds, he was doubling over and coughing uncontrollably. It was incredibly loud. And in under a minute, he was down on his hands and knees behind the bar, 
puking in the grass. Still, kind of no harm, no foul, until he gets up and puts all of his weight onto a tumbler glass that was sitting on the table he used to help himself up, cutting his hand open so, so badly. And then something very interesting happened, something that had never happened before. I started vomiting at the sight of the blood. (laughs) Oh, shit. So naturally, this is pretty disruptive. And the groom, who just so happened to be nearby, comes over to see what's going on and fucking faints the second he sees this guy's hand, smashing his head on the bar slash table on the way down, his face taking the tablecloth and everything on the table down with him. Totally unmitigated disaster. Both of them had to go to the hospital and the bride was understandably super upset and screaming at the caterers. So I decided, well, it's been a good life and begin to march over to explain to her what happened when out of her mouth comes a series of very specific slurs directed at the owner of the catering company. I didn't get a single word out of my mouth before she said, fucking sue me, turned on her heel and told her people to just round her shit up and go. Cue the major shitstorm. Everyone is fighting with everyone and almost all of the guests left. I told my wife what happened on the drive home and she said I should call the catering company and apologize, which I did. And the owner laughed for 30 seconds on the phone before saying, well, whatever, fuck that bitch. So yeah, don't smoke a lot of weed, I guess. Okay, I don't think that this guy's the asshole. I don't think he (laughs) drugged her. I was thinking that he like offered the bartender a Xanax and then the bartender took a shot and like passed out behind the bar. <laughs> he didn't know how strong the weed was <laughs> and neither did. And a, a lot of like blood phobia is like super common. So common. I feel no um, sympathy for the bride and groom now because had the bride uttered some curse words, she'd be like, shit, fuck, like this ruined my fucking day. Yeah. Slurs, however, means she's a bigot. And therefore, I don't care what happens to you and your groom because your groom must be okay with that if you guys are getting married. Oh, he knows. So, um, you're, no, I think that, no, you didn't intend to drug someone. No, this one was more of like a, um, no words. Like, it was just like, a just domino effect of like, the bad got worse. Yeah, I think this is like, one of those things of like karma, a long time coming um, for the bride. And <laughs> I think her husband passed out and then she showed her true colors when she insulted the staff who was probably trying to like soothe her, console her. Yeah. And, and she's calling them slurs. Apologize profusely, I bet. Yeah. I would just be like, oh my God, I didn't know this would happen. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't be like in, in no place in my life would I see someone attempting to help me or like you know, resolve a situation and start like calling them slurs. No. I think that's her and her husband are definitely assholes. And I think that if anything, you did a really good thing drugging them. Car- drugging them, yes. <laughs> Karma. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, I guess like this poor little bartender, like it is kind of on him for, you know, taking a, it yeah. honestly sounds like this was a dab or something. Like this was pretty aggressive shit, but it's kind of on him. But like the fiance and the fainting, like, it's just, you just can't, it's like an act of God. You just can't like that saying, like, it's just like uncontrollable. Yeah. And he's also hurt, you know? So like, even if you're like, I hope he gets his come up, it's, he's hurt, dude. That none of these people are the, everyone's an asshole. Some people are unintentional assholes. (laughs) The couples, how they reacted is just like, they're very much assholes. Brides are asshole for sure exactly i understand it's your special day but you could have made this like a fun like oh sorry guys but you didn't it could have just been like oh my god my fiance get him up is he okay okay yeah. like let's carry on yeah like send or, the bartender to the hospital yeah send the bartender to the hospital prop your husband up in a chair and then have your own dance in the middle of the floor like this is my time to shine yeah give him a lap dance out there exactly you can make the best of a bad situation like this you can and she didn't she made the bad situation worse yeah, like, uh, she rounded everyone up, like, get my shit, let's go. Your night's not over. Yeah. Who knows how injured he was just from a little head bonk. Exactly. He probably was fine. Maybe a little concussed, but... He's a pussy. He You're a bitch. He would have been fine. Yeah. Top comment on this one. This is a masterpiece of a shit storm. Mm-hmm. Glad I wasn't at that wedding because... Oof. Exactly. Speaking of uh, dergs, I'm like... Ugh. I might have to start saying dergs, you guys, because I want to actually be able to post these TikToks. My boyfriend, 35 male, 
drugged me, 26 female, with Benadryl because we got into an argument before our road trip and he wanted me to sleep the whole time. Uh, this is a nine-year age difference, so I'm already weird about this. Okay. Monday, we decided to make the eight-ish hour drive back to our home state and quarantine there instead for a few months. Right before leaving, we got into a big fight because I wanted to stay at my mother's house for a while. He doesn't want me to, among other things I won't get into. Well, before leaving, we decided to eat dinner so we didn't have to stop anywhere. Fast forward to our drive, and not long after hitting the road, I passed out. Don't even really remember falling asleep. Woke up one time for a while, drank some Gatorade, which he gave me, and then I fell asleep again. I thought this was extremely weird because I wasn't tired hardly at all, and we didn't even leave super early. I kept commenting on how weird it was that I was tired the whole drive and slept 90% of it. Yesterday, the tension eased a bit, and he made the offhanded comment that he wishes he could drug me more when I, quote, act out and argue with him. I ask him what he's talking about. Proceeds to tell me he put Benadryl in my drink and that's why I slept, so he didn't have to deal with me. He literally said this as it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm still reeling from the conversation and completely floored. I don't know if I'm overreacting or not, but something tells me I'm not. And it's extremely fucked up to put medicine in drinks. I don't know what to do. No, he's 100% the asshole. Here's the thing. I have ADHD and I've heard a lot of people throughout my entire life say the most fucked up shit ever with the most straight face. So I always take it as like face value. That's no the most normal thing ever. Yeah. And then I talk to someone later and I'm like, that's actually a horrible thing to say. Yeah. No, anyone drugging anyone. What if you had an allergic reaction? Like you're nine... Okay, your boyfriend is nine years older than you, and he treated you like a child. Literally a kid. And, and drugged you, and you're not the asshole at all. No, I would have sued him. Oh my God, you can sue him. That's the great thing. You could. If you never ask yourself, am I the asshole? If you pull up law, in a court of law, you could legally sue this person. Absolutely. I, if a friend drugged me, if my parents drugged me, think about like if it wasn't your boyfriend, and a friend did it, a stranger did it, your parents did it, would you then... Like, be mad at them, of course. Remove yourself from the relationship situation. That's so infuriating. I would be broken up immediately after hearing that. Like, yeah. the what do I do? Like, if someone's willing to drug you, what else are they willing to do to you? Yeah, like, yeah, what are they willing to do to you? If they're going to treat you like a child, like, they're, oh my God, dude, break up so, like, so quickly. Run, like, fucking run. I'm, like... Oh, I wanted to drug you. Like, that's like putting duct tape over her mouth because you didn't want to listen to her talk in the car. Like, wh what? Like I wish I could do this to you more. I wish I could do something that's a criminal offense to you more. That's like, imagine like if your partner was like, I wish I could rob you as much as I just did. Like, you would be like, no, I actually have to leave. Switch out any other minor criminal offense and like ask yourself, is it normal for my partner to be doing this to me? Yeah. Oh, God, that's so... Oh, my God, I want to hit him so bad. <laughs> well, this one, too. This whole fight started because all she wanted to do was stay at her mom's for a little bit. Yeah. And then he put it as he wishes he could drug me more when I act out. So her wanting to stay at her, her mom's house is her acting out. Yeah. It's like all control for him. That's, he just wants to control her. She's not erratic. She just wants to stay with her mom. You want to control this woman? Leave. Girl, leave. Like, I... That No, that's so fucking disgusting. That's gross. Terrible. Top comment on this one. Listen, leave now. As a woman who has been there and didn't leave when I should have, leave. Second, you can get evidence later. You have a phone. He's bound to try to talk to you. Get him to admit it later via text or something, but proof is not or should not be your number one concern right now. Your safety is the most important thing. Can your mom come get you? Can you get away from him to public space with people and wait for her or a friend to pick you up? And someone replies back, I've been there too. My ex-husband started fixing me a cocktail after work every night to help me unwind. I'm not a big drinker, maybe four or five times a year, so I wasn't that interested in them. He would press me to finish the drink. I didn't understand. Then I noticed stuff floating on the top and the residue in the bottom. Asked about it and he would say, oh... Must be the ice maker needs to be cleaned. I found out he was crushing Ambien and other sleeping pills and adding it to my drinks. And yes, that made me more compliant in all the ways he wanted. 
I figured it out. Didn't try to get proof or call the police. I just got out. I often regret that I didn't try to document it, it and press charges, but at least I got out alive. It's also like, Whew. wasn't like, like, like narcissists want to isolate you away from your family or your friends. So he's trying to do that. Mm -hmm. He's drugging you. He's nine years older than you. He wants to control you. He wants to own you. He doesn't love you. This is not love. No. Get away from this, this man. This is abuse. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one thing about age gaps that you really have to be careful of. It's like, okay, why is a 35-year-old dating a 26-year-old? And I've would like done an age gap episode where people are like, you know, there's 30 years between me and my partner and it's love. And I'm like, that is amazing. I'm really happy for you. But a lot of these cases with older people going for younger people, it's so that they can manipulate them yeah. and control them. Yeah. And so like in this case, it's like that red flag number one, keeping you from your family and now drugging you like, no, like this man is unhinged. He is. And I like, as someone who's like 26, the idea of me even, so 21 is like the legal drinking age, but the idea of me dating someone 21, they are so vastly different from me, like in like terms of career and like emotional development, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I would feel like I'm taking advantage of, the, of them, even though I'm a legal, we're both legal adults. Yeah. You know? It's a weird dynamic because I think the same way where I'm like, okay, I'm only 27, but I can't imagine dating like a 21 year old, 22 year old that's still in college. Yeah. Like, even though it's not that weird of an age gap, like, there's no way. I would, I think I would have a mental break if I was talking to my partner and one day they were like, yeah, this like exam is like going like, this exam is like super hard and like, I just want to like be 21 already. Like I want to drink and like cope. I'd be like, dude, I am so far removed from what you are talking about right now. I would like dissociate. I don't understand how men are perfectly okay with that. It is very, very goofy. I don't get it. Goofy, I, it's gross. I just saw something though and it was like, a statistic where they polled a couple thousand guys and it said that men are most attracted to women six years younger than them yeah, and they're most attracted to women that have a similar jawline to their mother. There was like some crazy shit coming out in this. I call it the Leonardo DiCaprio effect because oh God, men's man. from the age of 21 to 70 or whatever – Men always are interested in someone who's 23 or below. Like consistently, that line draws right there. Women are attracted to someone who's within, like there's like a, you know, they match each other on okay. age, on yeah. the graph. But like men are just consistently attracted to 23 and below. Also, yeah, there's like that whole Freudian thing of like men are attracted to their mothers. Oh, it's just it's so scary. <laughs> that whole like, okay, I need to, I need to tread lightly. But that whole like mommy, sorry, mommy. I don't even want to humor that, like, even as a lesbian, because, like, I don't like the idea of someone perceiving me as their mother, no. you know? I have a, I mean, maybe it's because I have a bad relationship with my mother, but, like, I just don't want you to see me as maternal. I want to be your equal, not your caregiver. No, like, some of those kinks, I'm, like, to each their own, and I respect whatever you want to do in your own free time. Go for it. But, like, there was a baby kink that came up, and I'm, like, yeah. why do you want to fuck... A baby. Why do you want to fuck someone you're treating as a baby? Yeah, there is, um, I think it's called regressing is where you want to act like a child. But I, that is strange that you should ask yourself. It's okay. I understand maybe if a couple times a week you regress back to your childlike self. I understand like reparenting myself. But ask yourself, why does my partner want to fuck a child? Like why would my part, I understand if you shave and you look very like young but ask yourself, if you're acting like a child, why would my partner want to fuck a child? It's eh, a red flag. It is. There was, um, there was just another Reddit story. The title I saw was, um, it was basically like, it was on relationship advice. And this person was writing in being like, I don't know what to do. My husband wants me to dress and act like his niece or my niece. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, that is so much to fucking unpack. Yeah. Therapy. Like, therapy. The, the thing is, it's like, it's not even, at that point, it's not even, I want you to dress like a child. It's like, I want to fuck this child, but I cannot legally, so I want you to dress like it. Mm -hmm. He's not only a pedophile, he's also, like, sexually, oh my god. I know. Reddit is like a wormhole for, like, crazy, oh, yeah. just unexplainable 
There's no words for some of this shit on here. Yeah. Like even this, like. I would just say pedophile. You're a pedophile, dude. You're not, you're not caught yet. You're like an abuser. Yeah. Yeah. So update on this one. Just wanted to go ahead and let you all know that I am okay. Update number two. Here was the post that got removed. Holy shit, y'all. I haven't been on Reddit since I posted my original here, and I did not expect this. I had to make an extra account with similar name to post because of the 48-hour thing, but I know a lot of people were genuinely worried about me, so I wanted to go ahead and post an update. Sorry if that's not loud. Thank you guys so much. I can't believe the support and response I got. I ended up calling my brother and telling him about it and asking him how I should handle it, and he got in his car to come get me before I even finished telling him what had happened. Him freaking out more than anything else made me realize that I wasn't overreacting. I didn't tell my boyfriend I was leaving until my brother was parked on the street and I just walked out with a few things. So now I'm in a messy breakup situation where he's already tried to come by my mom's house even though I told him I didn't want to see him and that I'd get my stuff eventually, both from his parents' house, where he's currently at, and actual house. Things are going to be weird to figure out, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm totally okay. Thank you. I can't reply to everyone who reached out slash messaged me, so I hope you guys see this and know I appreciate it. Good. Good. Thank God. Good that her brother came. It's also, like, very grounding. Um, A lot of times, like, someone is so convincing in what they say, Mm -hmm. you do need to tell another person for them to be like, this is not normal for it to finally click in you. Yeah. Because I have like ADHD and so sometimes people say things so normally that I'm like that's perfectly normal but then I talk to someone else and it's like it grounds me and then it like sets a precedence you know her brother reacting the way he did really did help her and I, yeah exactly I it's very grounding I know thank god she had someone like that in her corner because like I think with like relationships like this that like are abusive or controlling and whatever like there's kind of that one final straw where you can brush things off and like kind of overlook it or like yeah. it skims the surface for so long, but then finally you kind of like get snapped out of it or like yeah. grounded, like you said, where it's just like, holy fuck. Okay, like, yeah, no, this isn't this isn't normal at all. Yeah, and I think that like when someone's been abused for so long and then they tell these stories, you're like, just leave. It's like a very like, why don't you just leave? But also like, you know, Stockholm Syndrome. If you fall in love with your captor, it's not just like, just leave situation. Uh, Everyone, like for all these stories, I could say just leave. But if you've been in this situation so long, you need to be kind of like shaken awake, whether it be like verbally, not physically, but like you need someone to be like, this is not normal for you to finally like, oh dude, I'm being treated horribly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I understand that it's like oversimplified if, if you're just like, just leave. But I like that her brother was like a man of action and like acted on it. Thank God. Yeah. And uh, relationship advice is like one of the best subreddits I've seen for people that are in abusive relationships. Like there's this one, um, poster on Reddit. Her name's like Evie something. And she's like a professional domestic violence Mm -hmm. coordinator or something. And the resources she always shares for people are incredible. I'll try to find it and post it in the YouTube description for, you know, those that may need it. But, like, that's one thing. Like, if you are in an abusive relationship and you are finally to a point where you're like, I need to go, I need to go now, do not tell the person. Yeah. Like, just go. Mm -hmm. Like, what she did by, like, waiting until her brother was outside on the curb. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. I know a lot of – I don't know a lot of – I like, the couple friends that I do know that, like, moved out of an abusive relationship, they waited till he was at work and they moved out a majority of his stuff. And when he did eventually return, they're friends like move all this stuff out because he's he's not going to be able to control your friends. So like just employ the people that you do have in your life. Oh, God. I, I hate that. I, I hate know. that so much. I know. Well, she's out. Good for her. Yeah, no other updates besides that, but I think she's good. She made the, the smooth decision, yeah. smooth sailing out of there. No Shave November is coming up, and we can only deal with hairy balls and – unmanscaped areas for so many months out of the year. So for the rest of September and October, and when they're ready to shave in December, let's make sure all of the men in our life are prepared with the best products. Manscaped is here to make sure all the guys in your lives are covered. The lawnmower 4.0 is amazing. I've given it to most of the guys in my life and so far they're loving it. 
I have been living in the boxers that Manscaped sent me. I wear them on my morning trips to Starbucks, grocery shopping, and lounging around the house. So if you want to steal a pair for yourself and get your guy something, try out the Performance Package 4.0 because Manscaped threw in two free gifts in there. And trust me, they're worth it. Make sure your man doesn't carve his pants pumpkins when he's grooming. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code THT20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code THT20 at manscaped.com. Make sure his balls are fresh this fall with Manscaped. Okay, up next. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my niece swim in our pool with the other kids? Last week was my son's 12th birthday party. My family showed up to our house. I greeted my sister who said she wasn't planning on coming since my niece, 14, was on her period and didn't feel like going out, but thought this would cheer her up a bit. I welcomed them and they sat in the living room to eat. I was watching the kids swim when my sister and my niece approached the pool. My niece was in her swimsuit, ready to jump in with the other kids. I stopped them and asked my sister if she was really going to let my niece into the pool while on her period. She said it was fine, really, and that she took necessary precautions. I don't know what that meant as a guy, but still, I knew enough about periods to realize things could get messy. I said, sorry, but I can't let my niece into the pool with the other kids in fear of any accidents. She angrily said my boys literally pee in the pool while we were talking, so accidents my ass. I just politely told her I was sorry, but it's different when dealing with blood than with urine, which is way too common in pools, by the way. Again, I said I wasn't going to allow any accidents on my son's birthday and suggested other activities for my niece. My sister blew up, calling me a raging, insensitive asshole then, literally, and out of the blue, told my niece to get dressed because they were leaving. I was shocked, and I turned in my seat. My parents then asked what was going on, and my sister told them I selfishly and meanly told her daughter off for wanting to swim in the pool with the other kids just because she was on her period, and then she left. Mom gave me a look and shamed me up and down for how I treated my niece and sister when they dropped everything to come join me in celebrating my son's birthday. I said I didn't tell them to leave, just didn't agree on letting my niece use the pool when she's on her period, especially since I've asked my sister if she's done it before swimming in pool while on period. And she said, no, I honestly don't want to have to deal with cleaning up a bloody pool for the sake of what family. I just felt it was inappropriate. And besides, it's not like she's banned from the pool for good. Mom said I was still in the wrong, no matter how hard I try to spin shit, then said it was God's plan that I don't have any daughters. And my kids are all boys since I clearly heavily favor boys, but that couldn't be further from the truth. My wife said I didn't overreact but at least I could have been nicer about it. But I believe that I was polite when I spoke to my sister, and I think she took it personally. Was I the asshole in this situation? Yeah, you were the asshole. You have only boys. They definitely piss in that pool. Chlorine is yeah. killing piss and blood. Like, it's it's totally fine. People and have I'll, sex in pools. Exactly, and I don't want to presume, but I assume she was wearing a tampon. She had something doing something. Yeah, and exactly, okay, it would have... If she's 14 and her mother also has periods, like she's not going to wear a pad in a pool because it would just immediately inflate. With water. And become a loaf of bread. Yeah. Like, so I assume that she had a period. <laughs> so she has something, oh my God, stopping her up. But you're- She's got a plug. Yeah, yeah. Your boys just piss in the pool. I think that's one thing people don't realize about tampons. Like it's literally just like a cork in a wine bottle. Exactly. Like I have taken luxurious baths on my period. And never in my life have I seen like da na na, da na like no. felt like there's like blood in the water. It's not fucking jaws. No, it's not. It's it's also, I don't want to say airtight, but like it's basically it's tissue. It's it's compactly sealed up in the canal. Yeah, you have your mother telling you you're an asshole. You have your sister, and then now you're worried. Oh my god, I hate that. Like he has only sons, and you know that those boys pee in the pool. Let another body fluid in the pool. That's the reason why chlorine exists. It's literally bleach. Oh, well, and like a pool is so big. 
like a little bit of blood, like just say she did leak a little bit out the side of the tampon or whatever happened. Like if that did happen, the pool is so big, you're not going to notice it. Yeah. You're really not, it's not going to be like, it's not going to fill with blood as if you're no. bleeding out and dying on like, you know, law and order SVU. No, it's not like, ugh, I'm going to get so gross. No one's going to want to listen to this part, but let's hear it. Like, if you sit in the morning, because like if you don't sleep with tampons in as you should not because mm -hmm. toxic shock syndrome yes. and you sit over the toilet in the morning while you have your period, you know, you you could turn around to flush and it does look like Jaws down there. Like yeah. that's why I call it Shark Week. Yes. Like because it, it is a little bloody water. Okay. So, God, where the fuck was I going with this? <laughs> Just describing the water. Is like, it's like super red, dude. It looks like <laughs> food dye. It does look like food dye. Like yeah. he wouldn't fucking notice like – this girl is fine. It's just it doesn't happen when you have a tampon in. Like you're you're good, but and I don't want to be idiots. like how heavy of a flow can a fourteen year? Oh God, I hate thinking about that. <laughs> I just like I I I hate him so much. I he know. has no idea about women's bodies. None, none, or about like chlorination. I know. And what did he say too? Oh God. If it's a salt water pool, I'll humor him. But then also his boys. Never mind. Actually, keep going. I know. Well, the mom said too, while on her period, she said it was fine really and that she took necessary precautions. I don't know what that meant as a guy, but I still, I knew enough about periods to know things or to realize things could get messy. If you don't know what necessary precautions mean, do you really know enough about periods? I don't think so. I think men think of a, a period as like an open wound. Yeah. And you need it to like coagulate, but it's not like that. It's just a little bit of shedding. It is literally shedding, and the shed then disperses the blood. Yeah. It's not blood. Mm -mm. It's shed. Yeah. I think the most embarrassing thing that, like, came to mind when I read this story, Minnesota, lake life, where you always, like, go out on the lakes. You go out on your friend's boats. Yeah. Constantly in the water. You're not taking a week off for mm -hmm. your period. Exactly. It's summer. It's hot. You want to enjoy <laughs> the water. And so I was on a fucking paddleboard once, and I had a tampon in. And I was like standing on the paddleboard. Oh, this just pains me to retell right now. But I'm standing on the paddleboard, just paddling around, enjoying my my own business, having yeah. a good time. Yeah. My friend comes up to me, my friend Mason, and he goes, Morgan, you have a string hanging down in between your legs. Oh. I just about died. Oh my God. Well. And pro tip for those that want to plug up. And still be in the water. Yeah. Cut the string. Oh, shit. Yeah. Cut the string. <laughs> oh, wait. That's such a good tip. Oh, my Pro God. Pro tip. Oh, I, but the thing is, is that's not even the blood. It's just like the string falling out. I know, but I was still like, fuck. Now, like, oh, it's just cringy. No one wants to see the string. Yeah. But, but just cut it. No, okay. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't realize Pro that. Pro tip. Yeah. Don't cut it like so far up, but like leave like leave a little bit, like a little bit for you to still like yeah, yeah, get yeah, a solid yeah, yeah. yank. But. Yeah, no, this one, um, asshole, for sure. He is an asshole. He has no idea about women's bodies. Oh. No, and that's what the top comment says, too. You're the asshole. Just how much do you think people bleed on their periods? Exactly. You don't want to clean up a bloody pool? Jesus fucking Christ. It would take so much blood to make a pool bloody. Also, tampons exist. Exactly. You would need to completely bleed out of your body for a pool... For a pool to fill up with blood. And there's that's not even close to like how period, even with the- Oh, I think that's where I was going with my toilet bowl story. I'm like, ugh, I don't even know. I'm sorry. Come on, continue. No, like, no, no, no. I interrupted Like you. it fills with- Yeah, I'm like a toilet bowl so little and like shark week during that, like, okay, yeah, that might get a little bloody, but a pool, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. I don't know. But also like the little boys are not sharks. They're not going to smell one hit, like one hit of blood <laughs> and be like, all right, we're going to swim towards the knees. <laughs> I, this man has no idea how women's body works and his, there are three generations of women being like, you sound insane. And he's like, I'm not insane. My boys pee in this pool all the time. <laughs> Which is common to like, people do that more than they should. Oh, Jesus. Everyone kind of eats, eats his, I was going to say eats his ass. That's not, <laughs> Everyone that's, eats his ass. That's, like, that's not what they fucking do. <laughs> Everyone goes off on him. Yeah. You're the asshole. It's called a tampon, bruh. 
Why don't you just build her a period shed? Sometimes it feels like we are not progressing as a society at all. Mm-hmm. I think there's like this, yeah. um, I think when a lot of people think of these like Reddit pages, they're like, it's just like filled with people who are like obviously the assholes, but the reasons why they become so top voted is because this person actually is the asshole. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure like shuffled in are like people who just like are genuinely confused or like there's a miscommunication. But am I the asshole? The asshole always gets pushed to the front, you know? Mm-hmm. So you are an asshole if you are popular popular on this page. For sure. I think a lot of people go into it too. Like, and that's where you can tell. The people that are just like so gaslit and they need reassurance versus the people that are like, you're fucking delusional if you think you're not the asshole in this situation. Exactly. Which, um, this next one. Oh no. Am I the asshole for telling my wife it's embarrassing she gave our daughter's bus driver cookies? Some, yeah, literally like my dream is to get cookies. Let's go. Some important details. My wife is very shy but enjoys giving and is all gung-ho about showing appreciation to workers she assumes aren't appreciated or recognized. She tries to pass these beliefs onto our kids. Because she's too silent to show her appreciation, she does it through gifts, usually baked goods. I've been embarrassed about it in the past. Our oldest rode the bus for the first time. My wife was waiting at the stop with our daughter and had her hand the bus driver a bag of homemade cookies. Then, when she picked her up from the stop in the afternoon, she gave a bag to the afternoon driver. I asked why she did that when she could easily just have said thank you and left it at that. She said the bus drivers work so hard having to comfort all the nervous kids and handling the unbehaved ones while driving. They deserve more than a thanks. I reminded her that this has embarrassed me in the past, And I think her behaviors are too extreme. I wouldn't want gifts from someone I don't know. She ignored how I felt. I contacted some people in my life to see if I was just crazy. And most of my friends and my mom agree. My wife's way of showing thanks just makes everyone uncomfortable. Am I the asshole? Yeah, you are, you mousy, unforgettable man. Of course your friends and your family are going to, like, validate what you're feeling because your friends are worthless they are not worth (laughs) writing down in my diary if i met them for one moment of the day (laughs) what do you mean that's the nicest thing ever if i go to a cvs and like a cvs employee asks me how i'm doing that means something to me like bus drivers are so forgotten it's just a nice gesture i like this woman's a fucking dream yeah and worst comes to worst they don't like the cookies they throw them throw them away You are the thought that counts. You are a man who is the color gray. You are forgettable. There is nothing substantial about you. You will dissipate in the history of time. This woman, however, (laughs) made a difference in someone's life. She just gave someone cookies. You know, that's not offensive. If she were to, oh my God, this man, you're just a forgettable asshole. Yes, you are. I like think the smallest gestures too are like sometimes the most appreciated. Like, you don't know the day this bus driver has fucking had. Like, yeah. that cookie, that cookie could have been the difference between life and death. Like, seriously, you don't know what yeah. that could do for someone. And, like, what the fuck does he say here? She's all gung ho about showing appreciation to workers she assume aren't appreciated or recognized. She tries to pass these beliefs on to our kids. She tries to pass these, she tries to be nice to people who do what are considered mundane jobs or unappreciated jobs, that's a good trait to pass along. That's like saying she tries to pass along like kindness towards humans. It's like really weird. It's like, dude, what you're the, the weirdo fuck? in this situation. It's uh, That's what I'm like. I'm like, I'm just blown away by that comment because it's like, isn't that what you want to teach your kids? To yeah. like appreciate essential workers and she, like be good humans? Exactly. She's striking. She's memorable. And you are nothing. And it's hitting you in the chest because your wife is something. And the fact that she's shy, this like that she's showing appreciation in the way that she can. If anything, you would write a poem about this if you cared any sort of ounce about your wife, you know? The f- oh my God, men are so tragic. This one blew me away. Comments, again, just popped off. Top comment has 60,000 upvotes. Good. This got almost 3,000 comments. But the top one, why is for you're the asshole. That's good enough for me. And they repeat that like a bunch of times. Cookie, 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 cookie. 
Also, this isn't about you. Stop making it about you. And someone goes, Hall of Fame response. I just, you are a lame man. You are nothing. When you leave this earth, no one will remember you, not even your family. This woman, however, will be remembered by the multiple people that she gave cookies to throughout her entire life. When she passes these values on to her children, they will be remembered for this. You pass nothing along. You are worth nothing. You are the asshole. Like, I would take cookies any day of the fucking week. Exactly. If Even if someone, even if I wasn't doing a task, even if I was just shooting the shit at pavilions and someone came up to me and said, hey, do you want these cookies? Because I feel like you need them. I would, that would strike me. That would resonate with me. That'd be a core memory for the rest of my life. I would probably fucking cry to be honest. I would be like, <laughs> no, no, no. There's so many people at this grocery store. Why did you give this to me? I would cry. Oh, I'm just like so touched by little acts of kindness like yeah. this. Like I got my, my mailman, I got him like Starbucks gift cards. And like poor little Dana, like how much shit I order on Amazon. Like yeah. this man deserves every penny I put on that Starbucks card, if exactly. not way more than I could like fucking afford. Like, uh, like I wonder too, like people like this, how do you treat other service people like servers? Yeah. And I think that's one thing that like I constantly hear is like, watch how people treat servers, yeah. Uber drivers, like anyone that like services them because mm -hmm. that is so telling about who they are as a person. Yeah. And I think, if you think kindness is embarrassing, you're an absolute loser. How is any of this embarrassing for you? It doesn't affect you. It like, has nothing to do with you. E even if the bus drivers didn't like it, they would not remember the next day. Nor would you hear about it because you're not, probably not in their circle of friends. No. You would just go back to your circle of friends and be like, that happened. And then just move about your day. Oh my God, this man <sighs> is embarrassing. And I know what he looks like. And I want to punch him in the fucking neck. <laughs> I know he wears short sleeve button up shirts with a bow tie and I want to punch him in the jaw <laughs> so bad. I hate that. I fucking love having you on because I am normally the one that gets heated like this. Oh, I hate that. And like, I feel like I have to rein myself in sometimes for like my co-hosts that are just kind of like, well, maybe he did this. And I'm like, I get, we all need a devil's advocate. You know, we all, we all need that from time to time. But like, thank you. No, if you need a, no, actually... Not everyone needs a devil's advocate. If you need a devil's True. advocate, just go to hell. Like, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, why, why do you need a devil's advocate? There's at no point when I give any man the benefit of the doubt, anyone the benefit of the doubt, when they think that nice acts are embarrassing. If no. I held the door open for someone and my friend said that's embarrassing, I would never speak to them again. That's so fucking weird. That is so weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't get this one at all oh my God. I just it makes you wonder like truly like what is going through this man's head how does he find this embarrassing like uh, how what kind of life did he grow up in what is his environment life yeah what the fuck because it's like that nature versus nurture like is this a nature thing where it's just like biologically like his brain just doesn't work like that or is it a nurture thing where everyone in his life is fucking t twatty I think, yeah, he was raised by, like, people who, like, don't care about anyone else. Wolves. And so, like, yeah, wolves. And now <laughs> he's, like, a wolf around a lamb. And he's, like, that's weird. And it's, like, dude, you are the odd man out. And it's really funny when people don't realize they're the odd man out. Because it's, like, everyone sees how weird you look. Yeah. And you can't see it. That's so sad. Pathetic. This one's pathetic. Another comment. Thank goodness your child has the kindness of your wife as a counter example to your behavior. Not only are you unnecessarily making an act of kindness about you, you are also shaming your wife to friends and family. I would hate to be married to a man who wants to crush my kindness and embarrass me in front of others. You're the asshole. Be a better person. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. If I ever dated someone who thought it was embarrassing that I was nice, I would... I, well, I like fighting, but I would never, well, never mind. You know what? I would just would break up with them. <laughs> what, what would you do if like your boyfriend ever said, that's embarrassing how nice you are to your mailman? I would say, go fuck yourself. Exactly. Like you, it would be such a weird thing. <laughs> I would not put up with that. Like I think, like I said, like how you treat service people is so important to me. Like it shows your character. Like also like, again, it's like how, what? why does how I treat someone matter to you? Like, and also again, like if you have a problem with kindness, you're fucked in the head. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't understand, like 
I would un- maybe if I was exceptionally like, too nice to someone and then like if all my friends knew them, then it would be like a weird situation. But we don't know these people and you're not being too nice. I don't get it. I don't get it at no. all. So oh, someone made like a comment on the thread and they were like, have you read OP's comments? I hope the wife serves OP a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip divorce paper soon. Poor wife deserves so much better. And now I'm so curious what the fuck he's been saying in the comments. Okay, so a large part of my brand is that I love divorce. So I would love if she served him some divorce cookies. I'm like, you should have told me that. I would have done a divorce episode. I, I have a folder going. I have so many YouTube videos about how many people should get divorced and how divorce is not a bad thing. Um, Literally, one of my first episodes was like, give him the D, divorce. Divorce is so... Here's I love thing. divorce. People associate divorce with such a bad thing. No. If your friend breaks up with someone toxic, would you say, oh my God, that's the worst thing in the world? No, you'd be like, good for you. Let's throw a fucking party. Exactly. So that's why I feel about about divorce. People I'm associate with such like such a bad thing. as like, you work so long and hard for this. You're finally free of this. Let's celebrate it. I love divorce so much. I think like divorce is not... I, I, yes. Like I don't think I could say it any better. Like it is not a bad thing. Yeah. If a person is being treated like shit... And being ridiculed for, like, anything, like, acts of kindness, for example. Like, yeah. that person should not be married to the other one. Like, that's fucked. Exactly. Like, in a lot of... Okay, I do sympathize with a, little, a lot of children of divorce. But, like, here's the yes, thing. Yes, the is, children are... Yeah. Is divorce the bad thing? Or are the parents, like, in conflict a bad thing? Yeah. The parents being, like, having animosity towards each other is the bad thing. Divorce is not the actual bad thing. You know, a divorce often is like the best solution to a horrible situation. I completely agree. I, oh, I, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think divorce needs a rebrand because a lot of people associate with bad, but like it just splits up two people who should not be together. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I've never been divorced. I I have gone through shit fucking breakups. Like that felt like divorces. So like. I get it a little bit maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I just, I don't get why people like, you got out of a bad situation. Appreciate that and just move forward. Exactly. And I think that divorce parties should be a thing. Because here's the thing. Let me pitch this. I love it. Okay. Yes. So you know how we have wedding registries? Yeah. Here's the thing. It's not the it's not the past anymore. If you are having a wedding registry, you probably already have the things that you're registering for. Yes. You already have a crock pot, whatever. If you get divorced, you have to split the assets so you actually do need something. Mm-hmm. And I think it also would be cool for the children involved, if there are children, to send them money. So they have something that they can hold on to yeah. that is theirs. So when they're split between two homes, they have something that's theirs. And also you give people like a crock pot or a microwave. And it's just a way to show your support. And I think divorce parties should be a thing. I'm 100% on board for this. <sighs> I think this needs to be pitched nationwide. I do too. I live right next to a party city. And um, there was 420 balloons. There was welcome home balloons for like military like spouses. But yeah. there was no divorce balloons. I was like, guys, this is like a huge thing for people. I, I know how to work, you know, graphic design programs. Adobe is my bitch these days. So let's design some balloons. Let's. I'm, and I'm being, make I'm, posters. Okay. And let's seriously, like, I think, I yes, think yes. we should literally like reach out to people and be like, let us throw a divorce party for you. Yes. John we will Mulaney, plan it. John Mulaney and his wife. That poor woman. I, I've seen her Instagram posts and I want to hug her so bad. I know. I just saw like the Anne Boy Lynn one and someone was like yeah. breaking it down on TikTok for me. And I'm like, I don't even know this tea yet, but I'm so invested now. Oh my God. So invested. I want to throw her a divorce party. I want to give her the best. I want to yeah. hug her. If anyone's going through a divorce, please reach out to me, email me, <laughs> DM me, whatever it takes. Wait, I have a divorce theme, like, next one. Like, yeah. Wait, actually, can I be on it? Yes. I love I have divorce so bad. I, I have, have a divorce. folder. So I love, okay, I don't love divorce, but I love um, what it does for people. It yes. separates two people who should not be wed. Yes. I. Everyone deserves their happy ending. Exactly. I'm and, a hopeless romantic. Like, there's, oh, yeah, exactly. Stay the fuck out of bad relationships. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So this man's comments. Info. You say her behavior makes everyone uncomfortable, but it seems like it only makes you uncomfortable. What reactions has she gotten from the people she has thanked in this way 
that leads you to feel embarrassed. And OP replies and goes, my family mostly. She has surprised my sister and mom with gifts for no reason. And they've gotten the impression it's for her to flaunt herself or she thinks they can't afford things. Overall, I think random gift giving is just awkward. The bus driver is getting paid to do what he does. He doesn't need my wife's pity presence. She needs to stop acting like all lower class workers feel neglected. Someone replies, do you refuse to tip anyone? And OP goes, if the service is bad, another disagreement her and I have. She believes everyone deserves a tip, no matter what, because we don't know if they're overworked, have family stuff, or just a rough day. I want to beat this man within an inch of his life. <laughs> like, how do you... Okay, pity, <sighs> pity presence? Gift giving is a love language. If someone, you know, is too shy to, like, you know, express that they feel verbally. Yeah. Gift giving is a very natural way. Like, it's not a... It's my... I, I resonate with that, yeah. Yeah, my parents' love language is gift giving. And they... I know that's how they say they love me. Ugh, I'm going to be weird about that. But, like... <laughs> I don't like that you associate that with, like, pity. I don't like that you associate tips with pity. This is how someone makes their living. This is how someone feels appreciated. How it's just are, thoughtfulness. Exactly. How are you... How does that even register in your mind? And I know that your parents are absolute shitholes. I do not want to meet your parents. I do not want to meet your parents. No, the fact that the sister and mom reacted that way for probably what was, like, a thoughtful, nice gift. Yeah. Like... <laughs> What? Someone listens to your needs and wants and buys you something that you've always wanted. Oh, this is a pity present. Who are you? Who actually are you? You are so out of touch with reality. I am mentally disabled, but you are so out of touch. I actually am, so I can say that. But you are so out of touch with reality that that you are you should not be here, dude. You are weird. <sighs> this, this one, um, this dude needs some help. He does. This one needs some I'm help. I'm so sorry. I'm getting... I'm getting, I'm getting weird about this. You're getting heated. I am. I want to punch him so bad because I know that I would punch him in his bird chest because this man does not have any muscles. His I would break chest? him. His bird chest. Yeah, he's very thin and tiny. I know that for a fact. <laughs> I would punch him in his bird chest and break all of his ribs. <laughs> and I'd be like, I could treat your woman better and I, I hate you so much. Oh, I'm bad. There's, not, there's nothing to be said after that one. You crushed it. <laughs> he does not weigh over 180 pounds. I could take him in a fight. I hate him so much. Fucking shit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm over here crying. This is great. This is great. Oh. Yeah, no, he does not deserve the saint of a woman. He does not. Fuck this dude. Oh, okay, wow. I... I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. That the gall so of that good. man is so fucking incredible. Men have the audacity. That's, that's one thing. Okay. How are you hanging? I'm good. I'm getting violent. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let, me, uh, let me lighten the mood a little bit, okay? Thank you so much. How do I, 27 female, ask my gardener, 50 plus, plus, plus. 50 plus male, to stop peeing on my citrus trees. Oh. Does she see him? <laughs> okay, so a little unconventional. But I didn't know where else to post this. Starting at the beginning of the pandemic, being home all the time, I went to pay our trusted gardener of many years. And when I approached him, he was peeing on the tree and didn't stop when he saw me approaching. He started what? laughing as I turned around and had my boyfriend eventually go back and pay him. I thought it was an uncomfortable laugh and went about our days. I thought it was a one-off thing. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable asking to use the bathroom, so I let it go. Come to yesterday. I caught him again. I know as a gardener he's on the go and doesn't have and doesn't really have a space to relieve himself, but I want to make it clear to him he can ask to use our restroom yeah. and he's always welcome especially since I'm often home when he is here. I just don't want someone urinating weekly on the fruit trees we eat yeah. and a space where we have children and family members playing. How do I, a young woman, go about this without making him uncomfortable or embarrassing him? Um, okay, so if you've already used your boyfriend to approach him, I would ask your boyfriend to ask him not to piss on the, yeah. the tree. Yeah. Okay, so... With the little knowledge I have about um, 
trees and plants and stuff. I would think maybe defecating is more fruitful. Yeah. But piss is acidic. So actually, you know what? That means nothing. I would ask my <laughs> boyfriend to approach and be like, you can piss in the house if you want to. Yeah. Why is it specifically on the tree? I don't know. It's like, is he marking his territory? I feel like he may be spraying. Yeah. But also like, here's one thing I've learned recently. Thank you, TikTok. That when men pee standing up, especially with clothes on, because he's not pulling his pants down Mm -hmm. to like get it over his hips, give, you know, some wiggle room there. Typically when men pee standing up, they drip and they got a little spray. Yeah. He's peeing on himself as he does it on the trees. Yeah. So then he has to go about the rest of his work day. So like, I don't, I don't know. I don't get this. I would, I would just like pee in a bottle comfortably within my car. If, like, you have to pee like that. I am trying to put myself in this man's position in any other job that I've had where I'm in someone else's, like, someone else's place. Yeah. I would never pee on someone else's thing. No. You know, I would maybe pee on someone else's time, but, like, I would never piss publicly. I think this man is marking his territory, and I think he needs to be stopped. It seems a little weird, especially that he did it again. Yes. He got caught once. Like, oh, you know, maybe they're not home, whatever. You know, COVID changed everyone's work habits. But the fact that he did it again. Yes. In the same place. I would understand if you're moving about the garden and, like, you, like, oh, God, I got to pee. Like, you're pissing everywhere. Yeah. But, like, you're doing it in the same place. You're a baby or you're a dog returning to the same spot. You're trying to mark your territory. I'd be like, come inside. Yeah. It's embarrassing. That's weird. It's so weird. I wonder if it's like voyeurism. Really? It almost makes me think he like wants to get caught. The fact that he's doing it again, like he wants people to see him. Yeah. It's maybe like a little bit of a fetish. I would, that's when I would pull him into a meeting with everyone who lives there present. I'd be like, so we caught you peeing there. What are you doing that for? Like I would, I would... I would humor them if they're peeing in multiple places, but the same place, I would pull everyone in so he could confess that, and then we could just be like, pee in the house. Pee in the house. I don't understand that. I also don't associate with a lot of men, so this is really weird. This one is a little goofy. I I don't want to be like quick to be like, honestly, maybe you need a new gardener, but I think if you have another conversation. How great do your roses look? Yeah. Is the grass cut real nice? Yeah, like actually, if it's like really trim, I would... Let him pee somewhere. Yeah. Maybe he's got medicinal shit in his urine that is, exactly. like, quite frankly, helping those trees. I think you need to weigh what your garden looks like versus yeah. if you like someone peeing in the same place at all times. Solid pros and cons list yeah. for sure. <laughs> Solid. Like a chalkboard. <laughs> okay. My, my, my birds of paradise are so great, but also he pisses on them all the time. <laughs> You're like, ah. <sighs> so top comment on this one. I mean, it's pretty much impossible to stop pee in midstream, but to do it again is weird, which, like, I get it hurts to stop midstream, but, like, it's definitely possible. Yeah, like, I mean, I've stopped midstream. Yeah. I've literally peed during a fire alarm, and then I ran out, and then I peed in the parking lot after the fire alarm finished. So it's not impossible. No. It's not like you're coming. Sorry. No, no, no. Oh, no, we're we're graphic on this podcast. It's explicit for a reason. (laughs) I'm just like thinking, I'm like, where are the times that I've had, I feel like I've tried to pee outside and I've been caught and had to stop and like quickly readjust. Yeah. But I can't think of a specific time, but yeah, like, no, it's it's definitely possible. Age is irrelevant. It's your property and you're his employer. Just be polite and word it nicely. Hey, I noticed you peeing on our trees. I'd prefer if you just use our bathroom, please. Yeah, exactly. I've had you hostage for quite some time now. It was not hostage. It was really fun. Okay. I have... One more okay, that we can end it on. Because divorce, now that I know you like it. Yes! They're not even married yet, but... Okay. I know, I, I just... They're not even married yet, but based on this, they might not want to get married, or in my humble opinion... They shouldn't. They shouldn't, and if they do, divorce is on the table. So without spoiling it too much... Am I the asshole for demanding my fiancé and his mom pay for a new wedding dress? Me, 26 female, and my fiancé, 28 male, have been engaged for four months. We're planning on having our wedding on October 18th. 
my future mother-in-law kept annoying me and sending me suggestions for choosing the right wedding dress and said that she knew better and tried to get me to approve of wedding dresses that she chose and when she couldn't enforce her decision, she demanded I take her with me to buy my wedding dress so she could have an opinion. Before I went shopping, I asked her if she wanted to come but started making excuses about how busy she was with my sister-in-law. So I went shopping with my mom and I was able to find a really nice dress, although it cost me a little over what I had saved for. It was worth it. I made some changes to it and it was perfect. It arrived to my apartment at the end of the week and I made sure it was stored in a safe place so it didn't get ruined. Yesterday, I got back from my mom's house and I found that my fiance wasn't home. Neither was the dress. I called him immediately, knowing that he must have taken it to show it to his mom, since she continuously asked to see it and refused to have me send her pictures of it on Facebook. I was so mad when it was confirmed that my fiancé took it to show it to his mom, and he said he was going to be home in 30 minutes after he went to the supermarket. I waited for longer than I had to, and then when he arrived, I ran to get my dress that was buried underneath grocery bags. I took it to check on it and its zipper was broken and the dress itself, fabric, was stretched out. I was like, what the fuck happened to it? My mother-in-law must have tried it on because it looked ruined. The straps were almost loose. I had to call my mother-in-law when my fiance told me his mom and sister took turns to try it on. I was absolutely livid. She told me she did nothing wrong and that I was making a big deal out of it. She said she'd get a replacement for the broken zipper, but I told her to pay for a new dress since it was stretched out and no longer fitting. She refused and said that I probably wasn't happy with my dress choice and wanted for her to pay so I could get a new one. I yelled at her for trying it on and ruining it, that she and my fiancé were responsible for ruining my dress so that they should pay for a new one. It's done. No longer fitting. The straps are in horrible condition. My mom said she'd pay for fixing it, but I just hate it now that someone else wore it before me. I'm mad at both of them and seriously considering postponing the wedding. Do it. You, you, the mother and the sister, emotional incest. You want to fuck your son and brother so bad. You are disgusting. You tried on that wedding dress because you want to fucking marry your son. And you want to marry your brother. You want to fuck your brother. That's weird. That's gross. Why else would you do that? Never in my life, never in my life would my brother's girlfriend show me her wedding dress and I'd be like, you know what? Let me try it on first. You want to possess this man. You are disgust. Oh my God. It's a little bit of enmeshment for sure. It's a lot of it. Imagine. A lot, I, yeah. That is disgusting. You guys are gross. You're unlovable. You're weird. <laughs> I want that to register in your brain. Like, it's so personal, a wedding dress. I have only been to one wedding in my life, but never in my life would the bride be like, you want to try this on? Would I try it on? It's personal. Say yes to the dress. It's all about them. 1,000%. And dresses, one, are expensive as yes. fuck to typically like custom tailored fitted like for some out el- someone else to just try on your dress yeah and stretch shit out and break the zipper you know they didn't fit in the fucking dress and, and they broke the zipper underneath the groceries as if it doesn't matter and for- he saw it fuck him fuck him fuck his mother and fuck his like sister those people are absolute trash you did not want to be in that family Like, I under, actually, no, I don't understand. But I'm saying, if you were to be weird and try something on, hang it up in the back seat. Don't put it underneath the groceries. Your mother and your sister want to fuck your your fiancé. That's what they want to do. It's, there's definitely something to be said about that. Because why would the mom try on the dress that her son was going to marry someone else in? Like, Weddings are like, if you put time and effort and thought in your wedding, like weddings are very important for a lot of people. Yes. So then like in that mind where it's like, he saw his mom and sister in that dress first and he envisions that as she's walking down the aisle, like they wanted to taint that for him. Yeah. They wanted to, but also 
he's the fucking idiot that brought it over there. He is, yeah. If so, my fiance disrespected me like that and let his mom try on my dress, it doesn't matter how close I am with his mom, like my boyfriend Justin's mom, like it doesn't matter how close I am with her. Like I would never want someone else to try on my dress unless it's after the wedding and I'm fucking selling it on Poshmark or some shit. Yeah. I, um, as a lesbian who doesn't want to get married, I, if uh, I could extend this, um, if my future partner's mother wore the dress that my partner would get married in, I'd feel like disconnected from them. Yeah. As I would be like, this is too personal, you know, like this became something else and I don't want you to wear that dress anymore. And so like, I, 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 it's tainted. It's tainted. The whole thing is tainted. Get another dress. And also like, it's, isn't it déclassé for someone to wear white to a wedding? Yeah. So like you basically quote unquote worn white to this wedding because you've worn the wedding dress this, oh my God, it's so, it's so unholy. I'm not even Christian, but it's so unholy. I would not let that person into my fucking wedding. I think this would be a very difficult relationship to navigate going forward. Like, I know a lot of people would be like, it's just a fucking dress. No, no, it's, it's not just a dress. It's symbolic. Yes. It's symbolic. Yes. And it's, it's the overall disrespect. Yes, it is. Like, um, it's just, sim- it's just symbolic. You know, like, I'm not a huge fashion person. But I know that fashion influences a lot of people's lives. And it'd be like me being like the Anne Hathaway of like the Devil Wears Prada where like, you know, Cerulean Blue came to the thing. Like it influences so many people's lives. If I were to say it doesn't matter, I'd be the idiot. Yeah. To say that the wedding dress does not matter, I'd be the idiot. It's symbolic. It's your one singular life event event where this is about you. It's just so déclassé. It's so tacky. It's so gross. You guys need to get a job. <laughs> Tacky bitches for sure. Tacky. The fact like she wouldn't accept pictures of it. And then she went behind the fiance's back and was like to the son, bring it over. Bring bring that little dress over so I can try it on. She has emotional incest going on. Yeah. Top comment on this one. Not the asshole. Girl, do you hear yourself? Your fiance took your wedding dress without permission and allowed multiple people to try it on. Do you understand how disrespectful and inappropriate that is. Yeah. You not only have a bad mother-in-law problem, you have a huge fiance problem. Needless to say, I'd be doing more than postponing. Yeah, I would. I'm a fighter, so I would fight the mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm not afraid of fighting people. If someone tried on my symbolic thing, I'm not saying wedding dress, but symbolic thing that was important to me, mm-hmm. or held my trophy or something like that, or like took over my life event, I would fight them. Girl. This is like getting, this is like fucking Taylor Swift and Kanye. We tear, like <gasps> Taylor Swift is literally like, this is like, a, a, like yeah. you reminded me, like I was picturing like a YouTube award or something where like you were getting a fucking award and someone comes up and you know goes like, you know what? I don't think Sarah deserves this award. This should be mine. This is my moment. And it's like fucking Kanye and Taylor Swift. Exactly. Like, what the fuck? That whole moment, if Beyonce felt like she was robbed, she would later comment on it. But Kanye speaking for, oh yeah, I would, I would, I would lose my battle with life fighting Kanye in this situation. I'm a Swifty, through and through. I love Taylor Swift. And I also, I understand Kanye because we share a lot of mental things. But like, I was just... Yeah, blown, away. Like, yeah, blown away. Blown the away. The balls. The absolute balls. Well, and then like just uh, the whole – I could talk all day about the snake and the recorded phone call and all the fucking shit that he did. I would fight my mother-in-law. I would fight my mother-in-law to the death. Yeah. I would, but also I think I'd I'd be calling it off. Like if yeah, you're – if your fiance is going to disrespect you in this way and like essentially walk all over you, mm-hmm. not give a shit about your day, your dress, how much energy, time, money you've spent on it because she bought it. She bought it and yeah. it was over budget. Fuck this dude. Exactly. He doesn't deserve honeymoon sex. Wait. Fuck him. I have a similar thing. I went on a date with a girl and her, she was like, I like you a lot, but my sister saw your social media and said that she doesn't like you. So she's not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I was like, imagine if I said that to anyone else. Imagine if you were a person, and I, if you were a person, imagine if I went on your social media and I went down to your 2015 post 
And I was just like, I don't like you. And I will no longer extend you the benefit of the doubt. Like, I was like, I was so mad that I was like, why are we here? Yeah, I was like, I don't know why you would hate me because this is how I am online. So you're saying that you hate me. Why would I say that I hate you? Give me a chance and then maybe hate me. It's just like a weird thing to preface the date with. That like, it just reminds me of this. Like, what the fuck? My mom and my sister tried on your dress and they... Ah, uh, It's not about you, dude. It's about this other person. Like... <sighs> I literally, like, insert that meme with, like, all the fucking math shit going over my head. Because, yeah. like, okay, like that girl, like, fuck that girl. Why go on the date? Like, and why even tell you that? Like, if that's something that your sister said to you, let that stay between you and your sister. Exactly. I was like, it just, I understand if you don't like my social media presence. But if you were to, like, think that that's just, like, you would apply that to me, I'm a real person. So if you meet me in real life and you say to someone, I hate you. Like, because what you post online, it would be such a weird thing to say to them, you know? Like, if it was just, like, someone I'm who... baffled. I know. So I was like, well, and then my sister was... Not my sister. My, the girl I was trying to, like, go on a date with was like, well, now you have to, like, earn my love and affection. I was like, I... Why would I try to do that? I don't have to earn shit. I don't... You would never say to anyone in your real life, I don't like your social media presence, therefore I don't like you. Like, I was just, like, weird. Like, why would I try to make you like me if you've already decided that you hate my genuine personality? You have to earn. You have to work extra hard to prove me wrong. No. If you already have a preconceived notion about me. Exactly. Prior to us even really knowing each other, fuck you. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, honest on, like, uh, online. I'm, like, I have these mental problems. This is what's going on with my family. And you're, like, I don't like that. I'm, like, why would I try to, like, correct that? You already have your assumption made up about me. Exactly. Just live with it, and I don't want to deal with your family. <laughs> yeah. I want this girl to get rid of this man, and I... Oh, my God. Yeah. Just, no one should ever try on your wedding dress. No one should ever try on your prom dress. No one should ever try on your quinceanera dress or your underwear. Like, ditch them. I would agree. There we go. I'm trying to, like, creep for her comments because they might be juicy, but her account was suspended. Oh, no. She does reply to the one being like, you have a huge fiancé problem, blah, 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 blah. She goes, yes, I'm aware of how awful and wrong this is. I'm just stunned. Who wouldn't be upset by what they did? Who would want to wear a dress that was worn before? I hate even looking at the dress now, despite the fact that I admired it so much and was so happy I found it. I'm heartbroken, and I feel so bad for leaving it at the apartment. No, you should be able to safely leave your dress in your own fucking home. You should. You should literally... I... When I leave my apartment and Brittany has her friends over, never ever do I worry about my medications or, like, my clothes. Like, I... I don't understand why you would... You would never have to worry about your wedding dress. No one no. would think to try that on. No, and, like, no fiancé in their right mind would go... I know how important this dress is to her. I'm just going to sneak a peek at it. Oh, wait. No, I'm actually going to then steal it. Like, no. Dude yeah. Dude is unhinged. Dude Un is weirdo. A weirdo. Unhinged. Yeah. Ew. Fuck him. That's Fuck. certifiable. He is a certifiable asshole. And so is his family. You should not marry into that. Save yourself. No. Run. No. Not worth it. I would love to hear from people about like similar stories in the comments of the YouTube too, being like, what is the biggest red flag that you missed with your partner's families? Yeah. Or like if you are going through a divorce or have been divorced, like I want to hear what was like your coming to like terms moment with like their families. I just, I love family drama. I do too. Cause like a lot of family drama is like indicative of like what your partner is going to like eventually present to you. Mm -hmm. I know I just, I would be so I would be so pissed if someone in my like, extended family like tried on my clothes. It's just strange. I'm very – that's one thing like I would I would say is like one of my flaws as like a friend. I'm very possessive of like my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know what it is if it's just like from like – and I've seen like a lot of it can be from childhood trauma where like if you didn't grow up with a lot or you grew up with like siblings that always took and broke your shit. So I don't know where it comes from really but like all of the above maybe – but, like, I hate when, like, people borrow stuff and then, like, don't return it or people, like, ask to wear stuff I haven't worn yet. So, like, this, this is my worst fucking nightmare. Yeah. Worst fucking nightmare. 
I I understand like when people don't ask to borrow your stuff. I just like I don't like when people feel like they um don't have to ask you something. They're entitled to your shit. They're entitled. Entitled assholes. I would let anyone borrow my car, my clothes, literally anything. But if you thought that you could just do it without asking me, yeah, would bug me. Yeah, I would literally, if you called me at 3 a.m. and said, like, I need your liver, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to get to the hospital somehow. But, like, if you just like, called me and said, give me your liver, I'd be like, fuck you. You, why didn't you not ask nicely? Ask nicely. Yeah, like, and I hate the entitled aspect of this. I yeah. hate entitled so much. That's, that's this to a T. Well, that's all I got for you. Well, thank you. We'll save. The, I have another story, but it is divorce related. Divorce, divorce related. I want to do divorce so bad. And now that I know that, I'm saving it. I'm going to amp the folder up, jam pack it. Yeah. Here we go. I have an entire series on YouTube about why people should get divorced. So be sure to check that out. I'm literally going to go watch it immediately after I drop you off at home. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you guys so much. Well, no. Thank, thank you. Like, you have made my day my night with your rea- response your reaction to the story i like this i like being unhinged and i'm gonna stew on all <laughs> these relationships that i'm not in i'm like girls get out of here why would you be in this oh, i love it well thank you so much no problem. and on that note you guys uh thanks for joining me on another episode of two hot takes and until next time bye guys bye